Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to see if the Creality Ferret Pro lives up to some of its pretty big claims. So this is the Creality Ferret Pro, it comes in this really nice case, it's got your standard instructions and everything's fitted into the case really nicely. We've got the standard tripod that you'll use to place it down if you want to record with something like a turntable, which for my uses is one of my favourite things as it's going to be more stable. And you've got the other bits to attach your phone. Then you've got the scanner itself, which feels really nicely made. It's really solid. There's no sort of flex in the outer casing, which is really good. And you've got your single connection point. And now we come to one of the really good things about this. It comes with a handheld battery pack. Now there's many other 3D scanners that have this as well, but there are very few that seem to have this as standard. And if you want to scan without your computer, it's really useful to have this so you're not going to get through the battery on your phone really quickly. The other thing I like about this handle is it actually has a separate screw to help you screw in the additional parts to go with this. Now this sounds like a really obvious thing to include, but a lot of other brands don't include this, so you end up with bits not facing the ideal direction, whereas this is really easy to adjust. And then we come to this funky little box, which seems relatively innocuous, but it's really cool. So this can attach to the scanner and it basically gives it Wi-Fi which means you can hold your phone separately to the scanner. So if you're scanning something awkward like statues or things with undercuts, it means you can hold your phone in one hand while getting your scanner to all those odd angles where otherwise you wouldn't be able to see your phone. And it honestly surprised me how much more convenient was not having cables to get in the way of this process. Not only this, but in the update coming to the software at some point in December 2023, it's currently in beta, you can use this Wi-Fi to connect it directly to your computer, giving you all the power that you've got with your computer and larger screen size to edit things without being bound to the computer by cables. Honestly, this for me is massive, and I actually came back and re-recorded this section separately because of how incredibly useful I found this over the last week. Other than that, we've got all the standard cables that you need, and usually they each have a diagram on them, or most of them have a diagram on them, showing you how to connect them to the various devices that make up this scanner. So why is the Ferret Pro exciting as a 3D scanner? Well, Creality have made some pretty big claims, and you can check these out from the link in the description. That link also does give you a 10% discount if you decide you're interested in the Ferret Pro, and that's available till December 28th, 2023. They've claimed that it's able to scan black and metallic objects without using any sort of spray, which is a pretty big claim, because 3D scanners are normally awful at these two things. So we'll try out some standard scanning, and then we're going to try out some black and metallic objects. I thought I'd start with this Elder Titan head, just as an idea of the amount of detail that this could capture, and the accuracy of it. And I have to say I do quite like the software. It looks relatively elegant in that there's not lots and lots of options. They're all hidden at the side, but everything's there that you need. And it's really easy to pan around and select the bits that you want to delete that you don't want because they're part of, let's say, the thing that was holding it up. So all in all, this can be a really quick process. I do wish there was a smooth function, which some other software has. This would really help with some of the noise that you get on it. But there is a denoise function, which sort of works similarly. And you can then do this in things like Blender, which is what I intend to bring it into. So it's not the end of the world, just something that would be nice to see added. So this is what this then looks like in Blender, and I just used all of the automatic settings on this. The only one that I then went back and changed was to make this completely filled in. But since doing this, I found you can change the density of the mesh. Though this is fairly dense itself, it just depends what you're going to want it for. But in Blender, you can then come in and change this using things like the Decimate modifier. So all in all, a really good scan and a very good start for this scanner. It was during this first scan that this beginner guide came up, which is really nice that it's there front and centre and you can also get rid of it. But it shows that you have an option that I haven't seen before in 3D scanners, which is a texture mode. So what this is going to do is use the texture, so effectively the variations in colour on the object, to help the 3D scanner keep track of where it is. So for things like in this image where you've got a vase that's going to be relatively flat and going to be very difficult for the scanner to keep track of, this is an amazing feature. Even if, like me, you've got no interest in the texture itself, it's just going to help when scanning the geometry. So I thought I'd find something round with relatively plain size to give this go on, and the closest thing to hand was this Pepsi can. This video in no way is sponsored by Pepsi, I think it tastes absolutely trash in comparison to original Coke, but if you disagree you can start an argument about that in the comments section. Now I think this feature really shows something about the thought process of Creality. They seem to have looked at everything about how this is going to be used and come up with as many ways as possible to resolve any difficulties that you might have. What could be a really minor example of this but was really important for me because I got a bit enthusiastic when setting this up 
is that in the screws that attach the mini USB port to the scanner, they've just done the simple thing of adding in a way of using a screwdriver as well if you do what I did and screw them in too tight and then you can't get your big fat fingers around them to unscrew it fully. Now this is something that probably shouldn't come up 99.9% .9 of the times, unless like me, you're a moron. But for that 0.1% of the users, it's there, and that's gonna save you a lot of grief. And that's gonna make my only real complaint about the Creality Ferret Pro a little bit of an odd one, in that you'd expect it not to have been an issue. And that's that they don't include a turntable with this, and for a scanner which has got built into the software, the ability to scan these round objects really, really well, better than any other scanner I've used, you'd have thought that would be included. Now, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not like a turntable is particularly expensive, but it just seems a little bit of an odd oversight. Another of these features that just makes life easier is that when you look at the scan, it shows you what is scanned well and what the software is having a little bit of a harder time interpreting. For example, here, being that we're using the texture setting, it's got the can pretty much all in green, meaning that it's scanned it and it knows where everything is. Whereas we've got the turntable, which is all black, there's no texture to it. It's in orange, showing that the 3D scanner thinks that it's scanned it, but it might not know as perfectly where everything's meant to be. So if you're using the geometry scanning function, and this had actually some geometry to it other than being a flat surface, you could go back over that and it's going to improve your scan. Again, something that just makes it really easy to use if you've never really used a 3D scanner before. And to be honest, even if you have used a 3D scanner before, this is a really helpful thing in the interface. For this again, we're just gonna use the default settings and then check out how this looks. And we get this really nice texturing. It's got very little in terms of a seam, which is fantastic. Now, a bit of that is placement of where you start doing the scan, but it's done a really good job of this if this is something where textures are important for you. Say, for example, you're creating game assets or something like that. Right, enough of the easy stuff. Let's get on to the big claims that Creality have made, that we can scan things that are black and metal. I'm going to start with this mini tyre and let's see how it gets on with this. So my first time trying this out and it did not go well. As I started moving this around, as you can see here, it very quickly loses track of where it's being scanned. It can't work out all the geometry of the different little bits of the tread, which I was hoping it might keep track of in terms of doing this with geometry. And effectively, it just turns into a madly rotating mess, even though you can see on the left that actually this isn't being rotated at all. So we quickly gave up with that. But I did want to try and get this working and going back to the original image that they show, where they're scanning something that's black, it does have other objects in it. So I thought I'd try something out by just grabbing something at hand, which was these paint pots, and just putting them in the middle of the wheel so that the scanner had something to grab onto in effect. And as you can see, this is working vastly better. The paint pots are allowing the 3D scanner to work out where everything is in relation to the different bits of it. And I must say that I do sort of think this lives up to Creality's claims. Other 3D scanners I've tried out wouldn't be able to manage this in terms of a black surface. They'd still keep track of where they those paint pots are, but you wouldn't get any of the detail in the tread. So up to you what you think there, but I'd say this being able to scan black objects is partially accurate. Probably accurate in the way that it matters, but you're going to need something else in the frame as well. But that's not particularly hard to do, and you could use the markers that came with the scanner, I imagine, as well. And the important thing is you are getting the detail of the black parts. Though from the look of the earlier try, if you had some purely black objects that you were trying to scan, this probably wouldn't work too well. Now in this instance, because I don't want those paint pots, there was no real issue here. I could just use that select function to go around and delete those out and then complete the mesh. And you can see we get a very decent looking mesh here with all of the detail that we might have wanted. So overall some limitations to this, but overall I'm really impressed. So let's step it up a notch and go for something really hard to scan. Right, let's be clear, this is going to be tough. Even on the Creality website where it says you can scan metallic things, it says it should not be a reflective metallic surface. And while this helmet has been in my shed for longer than it probably should have been without being cared for, it is still fairly reflective. So this is about as hard as it gets. 
I would not even attempt to scan this under normal circumstances, and I want to be clear that Creality does not claim the ferret should be able to scan something like this. But why not push it to its limits and see exactly what it can do? Now I'm also limited by doing this on my own, Mrs. Vall is not available today, which means I'm trying to scan a very large chunk of metal single-handedly. So you'll see here that I do get actually a very good scan from this, I was shocked that it was this good, but I can't fit the whole helmet in in one go and I don't have enough arms to be able to do this fully. But you can see just how good a quality this is for something that just shouldn't work. And even Creality say this shouldn't really be something the scanner is capable of doing. So I thought I'd try this again just going for one half and then I can just mirror it in Blender which seems like a sensible way to do something that's just too large to scan in one go. But it was at this point where the metallic surfaces did cause too much of a problem and the scanner just couldn't keep up with what it was trying to scan. So not having used it yet I thought I'd throw in a couple of the markers and try to use that scanner setting to give this another go. And you can see how easy this is to keep track of. You can see in the top left hand corner that they put green over each of the markers when it is keeping track of how many markers have been placed and if it scanned them before earlier and then they go red if it's not sure where they are until it recognizes its placement. And then it will sort out any of the previous scanned elements once it recognizes where it is. And you can see from the middle section just how good a scan it is getting off of this helmet and again, this just isn't something that should be scannable with a 3D scanner. And once again, I love this really clear green in the main viewport if it's scanned and recognised where it is, whereas red if it's scanned it but has some issues with where it's meant to be exactly. Now skip through the processing because, well, you've seen that and it's done an absolutely fantastic job of this. You can see there are some slight distortions where the markers are. That's actually me not putting the markers on fully because I wanted to make sure I could get the stickers off of what is a slightly rusted metallic surface. So you shouldn't have that problem with something else. And again, it's very easy to just delete out the sections that we don't want. Over to Blender and we can see again the quality of this scan and how easy it's going to be to use. All I'm going to do is mirror this over to the other side. It's a very quick process in Blender if you don't use Blender. It's quite nice for 3D scan manipulation afterwards. And I'm just going to play around with where this is to get it exactly lined up. And you can see that we've got this really respectable looking helmet. Just a little bit of clean up to do and then this would be usable. So let me know what you think of the Creality Ferret Pro. I've been really impressed and hopefully you have as well. There's a link in the description for where you'll find it. And if you found this review interesting, please do hit the like button. It really helps me out and I hope to see you next time. Have a great day, guys.